Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. On the Arrowverse today, we're going to be talking about Earth Prime issue 6. This is the final issue of the Earth Prime crossover for the Arrowverse in the comic book. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we are going to be talking about this final issue because what happens in this issue is crazy. It's it's definitely Flash-centric. It's focused mainly around Impulse and XS, Nora and Bart from the future, but obviously the with the rest of the Arrowverse, they kind of collide with them as they try and take down Magog, who is the main big bad of the Earth Prime crossover series. And so, as promised, there are many familiar faces that we get to see return to this Arrowverse comic. And in fact, it's been stated before and since these comics have been released week after week that it is canon to the Arrowverse. So that means this has actually happened behind the scenes, obviously off camera, and this is just something that they're doing in the comics. But it's supposed to actually be our characters. So we're going to go through the issue chronologically and break down the individual Arrowverse heroes that show up and what they do. I have to say it's very exciting to see this comic actually come to life because you get to see many characters from shows that have ended and you know unexplained storylines about where exactly they've ended up and they are kind of wrapping some of that up and expanding on maybe new stories for a potential future return for these characters in the Arrowverse in the form of like the actual actors returning at some point in any of the shows that are still on by the time that they potentially come back. But anyway, the first character who mainly shows up is Supergirl. I would argue Supergirl has the biggest presence in this issue beyond Magog, Excess, and Impulse because Supergirl has like various points in the issue where she shows up. I think she has like four different segments where we're going back to her. So obviously that is amazing to see Supergirl in the Arrowverse returning but in comic book form. So the first time that she shows up, she helps out excess and impulse by battling Magog. She's able to hold off against Magog for a bit and give time for excess and impulse to come up with a plan and so they run over to Star City and at that point we see the return of Green Arrow Mia and she has a metal arm and I don't know the explanation for the metal arm because she doesn't have a metal arm normally in the Arrowverse and that is obviously just a futuristic thing so potentially this happens sometime in the future and that version of Mia does have a metal arm, and maybe that's going to actually come to fruition whenever Mia returns. You have to remember, it's probably likely that she will return at some point, since the actress who plays Mia, Catherine McNamara, is heavily linked to the CW because she is currently just signed on to a new CW show, so that means that she'll be around maybe to show up in a crossover for like maybe a couple of days of filming if she got some downtime. And also she just returned in Armageddon, so I think there's definitely precedent to expect a return from her at some point. So it was cool to see her in this issue, especially with the Metal Arm. But these heroes are all disappearing one after another with no explanation. However, there is someone watching over them with a green hood who we suspect is the Spectre. Then we run over to Coast City. We have the two versions of the Atom. Of course, Ray Palmer is there and the new Atom which we've seen in the Arrowverse and we last saw in Armageddon as well, that being Ryan Choi. And so that is like a very brief segment of the issue before we go over to Gotham City and we see Batwoman. But Batwoman, like Green Arrow, isn't exactly the same because she's got like a full face mask on, like you cannot see her face. And I feel like this is inspired by Batman Beyond, it just heavily reminds me of that. Her logo has changed a little bit as well. I think that one looks really cool. It's great to see her back, obviously, since the cancellation. So this basically marks the last time at least we're going to see them for a little bit of time. Now, I don't know if there's any plans for them to return in The Flash Season 9 because we know that potentially Eric Wallace has teased some sort of mini crossover if he can sort it out at the start of the season. We'll be making a video on some of the teasers that have been released recently to do with that sometime maybe later this week. But yeah, so we have Batwoman who is in Gotham, she's fighting and that's when XS and Impulse show up and we get to see her. But then she shortly disappears 
as a black suited Superman shows up. Obviously, this black suited Superman we saw in the Superman Lois issue of Earth Prime, and he's part of Magog's army that he's built up over the last couple of issues. And now they are fully all together. You've got characters like Clayface who are also in the team. That's the first time we've seen Clayface in the Arrowverse. And so that confirms that he does exist and he's out there. Maybe at some point we'll get to see him. But let's move on because Magog gets the better of Supergirl as we return to Supergirl. Like I said, there's various segments with Supergirl. And so Magog gets the attention of the crowd. And he uses Kryptonite, more well, some sort of like Kryptonite beam on her. And she instantly vanishes as she hits the wall. And so this leaves XS and Impulse worrying what exactly is going on. They have no idea. And so they resort to running to Smallville. And they meet Clark, who doesn't seem like all too happy to help out. And he just offers them some wisdom. And that's pretty much it. He doesn't suit up and come to assist. And so shortly after this... There is a mysterious hooded green figure that shows up again. You can't really tell what his face is and who exactly is it. Is it actually the Spectre or not? And it's at this point that XS and Impulse are deemed ready and worthy as the mysterious hooded figure says. As a lot of the Arrowverse's heroes who all disappeared previously in the issue return. And they are finally allowed to assist XS and Impulse because they've been deemed ready and worthy as heroes in the Arrowverse by this figure. And so this was a really great moment, proper Arrowverse crossover moment, where you see the return of Martian Manhunter, Wally West, Green Arrow Mia, Supergirl, Hawkman, Hawkgirl, The Ray, Batwoman, both Atoms, Batwing, and Jax. And also there's one other person, but I couldn't identify them because they were just hidden at the back. And I'm pretty sure that was The Ray, but I could be mistaken. I haven't read the other issues in a while, so I kind of forgot who exactly did show up. But nevertheless, it was awesome seeing them all there, especially personally seeing Martian Manhunter and Supergirl was amazing. But as well as Wally West, Green Arrow Mia, and seeing Batwoman in this new cool costume, I thought it was awesome. And so with the help of all of those heroes, they're able to take down Magog once and for all and take away the other villains that he had been recruiting. However, one villain disappeared, and that person is black-suited Superman, and they say that is a mystery for another day, so they don't bother going after him because they don't know where he's gone, but you can presume that is going to be a story that will continue in Superman Lois at some point. Doesn't mean they're going to start right away with that at the beginning of Season 3 of Superman Lois, no, but that means that that is a potential teaser for a future storyline with the return of that character and finding out exactly what happened to his Earth and what it currently looks like right now because we really don't know since John Henry Irons came to our Earth. Okay, so the Hall of Justice is what comes next. As you see, Black Lightning, who didn't show up previously in this issue, Superman, Clark was in the issue, and obviously he kind of brushed them off, but gave them some advice. The Atom's there, White Canary, Supergirl lands, and um, Wally West, Jay Garrick, and Barry Allen are all there. So all the Flashes are all kind of looking at the screen, looking at the successes of Impulse and Excess. Barry's very proud, obviously he's a very proud dad at that moment, because they're able to overcome Magog. Obviously they needed some help, but they've proven themselves ready and worthy to be in the league of Arrowverse heroes. They are better than just glorified psychics, and so that's kind of what the issue was about. And so then we get this quote coming from the green hooded figure that we've been seeing briefly at various points throughout the issue, and he says, changes are coming, an unrest stirs in our reality, cosmic forces are aligning, this trial only pales next to what will be expected of them, they must be ready for what's coming. And this is said by, as the panel reveals, Oliver Queen, the Spectre. And at this point, I freaked out. I mean, I kind of knew it was him this whole time, but just seeing him in the flesh, actually with our other Arrowverse heroes, that was an amazing moment, and I really wish we had this on screen, personally. This, personally, I feel like is definitely them teasing more Oliver Queen in the future. I don't know if that's going to be him showing up, say, at the end of The Flash Season 9, because we know there's a big secret cameo coming. 
However, I'm going to make a video on that probably tomorrow. I'm going to theorize about that. But there's also the chance that he could show up next season and season 9 of The Flash. Because I do feel like Stephen Amell is ready to come back at some point. And I would not say it's too far-fetched to assume he could show up in the next season of The Flash. Especially if they do another crossover. And with this, it seems like... Yeah, they probably got stuff planned for Oliver in the future, and considering his big role, having the original Arrowverse hero return is obviously something that everyone wants to see, and I'm pretty sure all of the creators behind the shows want to see. But let's talk about one more thing that happens at the end of this issue, Earth Prime issue 6 that is, and that is a mini extra tag on story with Cisco and Tinya Wiseau, aka Phantom Girl, they're able to take down a couple of villains here and there, but the main thing is the ending because it leads directly into the next season of The Flash because blood work breaks free and the final text at the bottom of that panel is to be continued in season 9 of The Flash. So that is something that is directly confirmed. The comic confirms it, it's canon. Bloodwork has escaped, he's going to be out there, and we're going to see the consequences of that in Season 9 of The Flash. I really can't wait to see this, even though I'm not like the biggest Bloodwork fan, I thought he was a decent villain when we had him, but it will be cool to see him return, just like any other Arrowverse villain out there, especially, you know, seeing Savitar in this brief bit at the end was pretty cool seeing him in the comics, but then also we've seen lots of Arrowverse heroes return, and also Arrowverse villains, so it's always nice when we get, you know, callbacks and bringing back villains like Reverse Flash that we've got recently. But that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. But for now, click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see.